Today in the lab, we're gonna have a little fun and we are gonna make some buttons. <laughs> Greetings, people of the internet. I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. Welcome to the underground lair where we create robots, aliens, zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. And sometimes we take those things and put them on buttons. And who doesn't like buttons? So without any further delay, uh, I wanna kinda show you the process of how I create buttons. Uh, now some of this is gonna require a button machine, but I'll tell you where you can get buttons done other places as well. But if you are thinking about getting one of these machines, or if you already have one, uh, I'm gonna show you how to do this. So let's get to it. All right, so I am getting ready to make some buttons for my online store, some button packs. So I thought today I'd talk a little bit about how to make and package buttons. Now there's a number of different ways you can make buttons and a number of different ways you can package buttons. I'm gonna show you how I do it, but I'm also gonna talk about some other ways that, that may be a different option for you. Uh, those ones you'll have to test out because I'm not that familiar with, but I do know that there are other options out here. Uh, so uh, these are some of the buttons. These are just pin back buttons. These are the uh, one inch size buttons. Uh, different button makers can do different sizes so when you're looking into button makers you need to decide what size you want. I like the kind of small ones. I like the one inch buttons. So this is my button maker right here. This one this one's a, a little pricey. This is more of a professional one. There are, the, the prices range anywhere from, you can get like a small, like a hand kind of button making kit for like maybe around $30 all the way up to like 400 and sometimes even more. This one clocks in at about $300, and, but it, I think it came with uh, a, a 500 different pieces for making buttons, meaning you can make 500 buttons. You, you have to multiply that because there's like three or four different elements to making these buttons. So this is the kit I got. We're also gonna talk a little bit about packaging buttons. So these are some button packs that I've made that I'm selling on my online store. This is the nerd or geek pack. I've got the comic book pack, the gamer pack, the hipster pack, and of course the zombie pack. So I've got all these and I'm planning on doing some other ones. I've got other buttons that aren't in any, any of these packs that I gotta kinda make collections for. But these are the ones that I've, I'm selling right now. They're available on my online store and I'm gonna show you how to put together these little packs. But let's talk about actually how we make the buttons. Now, again, like I said, there's a number of different ways you can do that. Um, there's there's two ways that I've done it. One is with the button maker. The other is just to have them professionally made. Now. It depends, it, a lot of it depends on price and everything, and it depends what you're looking for. So I, I would recommend, and I still do order professionally made buttons for things like this. So this is a button that, these ones I usually just give away for free, like with orders and things, because it's got my logo. Not a lot of people actually would, you know, want to purchase this because they don't know what it is, but it's just marketing. So this is, you know, this is my little logo pen. So I need a lot of them because I give them out and it's just one style button. Now, if that's the case, if you got one or two different style buttons that you wanna do and you need a few of them, then I would have them professionally made. I go to a place, I will put a link in the description, but they can do like 100 buttons for like, it's like $15 plus shipping and handling. So that's like super cheap and it's painless. You don't have to worry about making them or anything because it does take time to make buttons. So that's the way to go if you need a lot of buttons. Like I said, I'll put the link to that place and I still use them all the time for things where I need a lot of buttons. And you know, but since I, you can see, these are just a fraction of the number of buttons I have and I also showed you the packs. So if I was to order a hundred of each of these at 15 bucks a pop, that would add up. Now, if you're a big company and you're gonna sell a lot of buttons, that that may be the route to go. Most of us aren't like that. So we need an option where we can make several different buttons, but maybe not a big of a run of buttons. So for that, that's why I invested in this, the uh, the button maker. Now there's different kinds of button makers. Like I said, this one, this one runs around 300 plus. Uh, but there's some other options there. There's like, uh, like what I think they're like called snap-in buttons, and you can buy a pack of them. Um, I don't have any to show you, unfortunately, but they're just like little cases. They've got a front and a back, and the back's got the little pin back, and you just put your artwork in, you just snap them in, and they're reusable, which is cool. The problem is, um, they, they probably come out to about 50 cents a button, and that could be a little pricey um, if you're trying to turn around and sell them for, usually the buttons will sell, for, a button like this might sell for about a buck or so. So, that's an option if you just, you know, say if you just want some little buttons to show people. Um, 
that's a way to go. It's not really advantageous if you're trying to like actually market them and sell them and everything like that. The other problem with the snapping buttons, you can tell they don't look exactly like this kind of button because it's got like a little plastic case around it. Um, I don't I don't know if they have any at this size. They usually like bigger sizes. So that is an option. It's cheaper. There's some little plastic button maker kits that I've seen online, and they just come with different uh, like. I don't know, you snap them in and everything like that and you can make buttons, but it seems a little complicated if you're mass producing them. This thing is like super quick. Um, so that's why I went this route. And I've seen some other ones that, that are around 150, a little better quality up to like this one, like I'm talking about. So anyway, so I will show you how I use my buttons and if, if this one's maybe out of your price range or if you wanna look at different options, I'll put some other, alternatives uh, links in the descriptions to other button makers. Of course, I can't really vouch for them because I haven't used them. Um, the other thing you're gonna want is a, like a button punch. Uh, you know, this will, this is way better than trying to cut all this stuff out with scissors. I would not not recommend it. And they sell button, button punches, or no, they sell circle punches at like Michaels and stuff like that. But you gotta be careful because if you're making one inch buttons, you don't wanna get a one inch, you know, hole punch because <laughs> even though they're one inch in dynam diameter, uh, that the design has to wrap around. Um, and so you need extra space. So don't be fooled like this one, you know, I can see it's a little bigger than just one inch because you need that extra space. So usually you need to get a hole punch that's designated for making buttons. Um, and that's what I have here. This one came with my kit. So that's another, you know, that's another added feature too. If you are gonna drop $300 on a kit like this or something, you get, you get all the, the elements to making the buttons plus you get the punch. So, and there's some, there's also another hole punch that you can buy separately. Some of, some kits come in, it just depends. You gotta look around. Um, there's one that's a lot better than this one, but this one works okay for my purposes. Um, the other thing you need is you're going to need a template. So this is kind of the template that comes with the kit that I bought, but you can find templates online and I will provide a template for this one inch button. And if you want to make bigger buttons or whatever, then you can go look those up yourself. You can just Google it, it's not that difficult. All right, so I'm not gonna really go into how you design the buttons. Um, that's kind of up to you. You just gotta be sure that you keep all your pertinent information, anything you wanna show up on the button in this inner circle. I. You probably can't see this because it's super small and I don't know if anyone will ever be able to, oh, let me find a white one. I don't know if you can see, I put, I put my URL and my company information on the outside of this ring right here. So it's just on the outside. Uh, that took a while, a lot of little trial and error to get that. Um, I don't know if anyone has ever looked at this and said, oh yeah, cirqueworks.com, let's check that out. But I just put it in there just in case, but it was, it was difficult to figure out how to get that so it worked right. So a lot of trial and error, but I got it. So now I've kind of got my own template for that. Um, and that's kind of up to you, but that was just a little idea that I do. All right, so what you want to do is you want to print, once you get your designs done, you want to, uh, I've got a big sheet, this is 11 by 17 sheet that I printed out with you know a number of your buttons. And you, one of the things you need to remember is when you're laying these out, you wanna leave a little space in between here because as you will find out when you start punching the buttons, if you don't have that space, enough space, it's, it, they're just not gonna punch right. So you need to leave enough space in between each one of your buttons. You, you, sometimes they even have problems with this right here on the side, but, um, but you, usually, you can usually get it to work. So, and you also just wanna print it out on regular copy paper, uh, regular printer paper. You don't wanna use heavy stock because it's, it, it, it doesn't work well with the button machine. So, so I printed these out and then after you get those printed out, you wanna cut these out. I use my paper cutter, but you can use scissors or whatever. And you just wanna cut out strips like this, you know? So let me find, let's see, all right. So I've just got a little strip here because we're gonna feed it through this this uh, button punch here, or I don't know if that's called if it's called a button punch or a hole punch or whatever. But so oh, my hands are shaking. All right. So ah, let me move that. All right. Let's try this again. So you just kind of feed this through. Get it where you want. I'm just kind of pressing it down, not all the way, but just to kind of lock it into position and then press it like that. And then I've got my little design here, all right? And then you can go through and just keep doing that bump, 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 bump with this thing here, all right? 
So now that we have our artwork done, we're gonna get the button machine out. You're gonna set it up like that. So it's just got this swivel arm. It's a two, kind of a two part process. And there is a science to it. So I'm gonna show you um, how you set this all up and make it work. So first of all, you are going to need, these are some of the different elements that you need, the different pieces to make your buttons, all right? All right, so here's what you need. These here are the shells. You can see they look kind of like a little, almost like a little metal frisbee, all right? So you're gonna take one shell and you're gonna put it in this. Now, the, this one is raised a little bit. This one goes a little deeper, so you can tell the difference here. So, but there's really no other way. You can't, if you're opening it up, this thing doesn't swing all the way over there. So if you open it like that, it's gonna be the one here on your left. You're gonna drop that down so the round part, the curvature is facing up, okay? Then, you're gonna get your artwork that you've already punched out and you're gonna set that in there, all right? Now, next, you, you've got these little, I don't know if you can see it because they're transparent, but these little mylar discs and that's what's gonna make it shiny. So you don't have to really use shiny paper or like I said, photo paper or anything like that because that's gonna give it that shiny look and protect it and everything. You're gonna set that on top and then these are your backs. Now there's two different styles, okay? Um, the one I have has separate a separate pin thing that you have to add to it. Um, this is kind of a hassle, so the next time I order some, I'm gonna get some that have the pins already built in, um, but I don't have those. All right, so we're gonna take this, this backing, we're gonna set it in. Now we want the sharp part pointing upwards, okay? So the smooth part down, sharp part, and it just goes in that little area right there. Just drop it in there. And here's where the magic happens, all right? So we position this here where the button press thing comes down. And you it make kind of a pounding, clicking sound. And as you can see, when you move over, it's like magic, it's gone. Where did it go? Well, it's in here. We move that back over here, push it like that, and then there we go. There we've got our button. Now, if you've got, like I said, if you've got the, the ones like I have, these little pieces, you need to kind of pop those in there. And this kind of becomes a hassle when you're doing multiples of them. Um, and then I always like to twist it so it's even, so when you put the button on, it's facing the right direction. So there, that's how I create a button. Now, now these things go really quick. You can just bam, 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 you know, do all that stuff. And if you got a nice, a good, decent button maker like this one, um, it's pretty easy. It, it, you can go pretty fast and it's kind of fun too. So, so that's how we make the buttons. So this is how I package my buttons. Now I've seen different people, they package theirs differently. This is how I do mine. Some people have more buttons, some people have less or whatever. I think five is a good kind of a starter number. Plus I only, I've got so many different styles that I want to keep five in each one. So that's mine. Some people will have six or nine or whatever. Um, anyway, so the way I do it is First, I just went and had some postcards made. So this is kind of my, my card art. So I just had some postcards made. They're the same, like if you were to fold this, which I will show you after I've cut them, it's the same on each side. You can do that if you want. But um, sometimes it's cheaper to actually, if you can get postcards, you can usually get postcards pretty cheap because you know a lot of people print them on their home printer, which is fine, but a lot of people don't pay attention to how much ink they're using and how much that's actually costing them to print some stuff. So a lot of times I'll send stuff out for things like that. Plus it's, you know, it looks nice, professional. It's got a glossy finish to it and everything. Um, so anyway, I print, print two on each one and then I just cut them with, a, with, my, with my paper cutter. And then like I showed you before, you get something like this and then I fold them. So now I've got that. Now I go with a little smaller size because what I like to use, you can go to clear bags. I use clear bags for tons of different things, all my prints and things like that. But for what I'm using here, you can just get these penny uh, card sleeves for, you know, whatever, like trading cards or like Pokemon cards, just standard size. That's what I'm using for these. So you can get a pack of these for like a buck. You can even you can find them at like comic book shops or any place that sells trading cards or game cards. Or you can even, I think you can even find these at like Walmart and Target and all that stuff. So they're really easy to come by. Um, so that's what I use. All right. And then I get some of this stuff, this craft foam, and you can find this pretty much anywhere as well. It's just, it's that foamy stuff. 
foamy craft stuff. That's why it's called craft foam. All right, so, and then I, what I do is I cut these down to, I think it's uh, two and a half by three inches. So those pieces, and that will fit nicely in here, and it'll give us, and it's just kind of the perfect size. So now we've got to take our button. So I'm gonna make a gamer pack button. So uh, let's see what I've got. I've got this one. I paused my game to be here. I wasted my life on video games. Good thing I have two more. Old school with the old Atari controller. Don't don't hate the player, hate the game. And this kind of destroy them with a little Space Invader type guy. So let me look at one that I've already done so I know how I arrange them. And kind of pay attention to, you know, how these lay out. Like if I've got, like, especially with my zombie pack, like I've got a lot of blue ones. So I wanted to put the, the purple one in the center just so it looks nice and presentable when you do that. All right, so because this is foam, you're just gonna open your pin up like this. And it's really tricky to get the positioning done. And, but once you kind of get the hang of it, you just kind of go in here like that. And then Fasten that, and I will repeat that process for the other ones. All right, so we've got all the pens laid out. Now we're gonna get our little card sleeve. And we're just gonna slip that in there. Now the, the buttons, putting the buttons on the little, on the, the foam takes some getting used to. You need a little practice doing that. And the same thing with putting these in the uh, card sleeves. They don't want to go in that easy. All right, so now we've got that. We have our button card and we're gonna need one other thing. This is kind of optional. If you're selling online, you don't necessarily need these, but if you want to display them in a comic convention, you might want to get a little hole punch and you can create a little display for those. And just find the center there. And there you go. All right. And we're just gonna put that over there like that, line it up so it's in position and then get a stapler. Any stapler will do. I've got a long iron stapler because that's what I use for comics, but. And then I usually do two staples. And there you go, there you have it. And that's how I package my buttons. So like I said, I will leave links to all of the area, all the places on the internet where you can get the button makers, supplies, all that stuff. And if you're interested in purchasing any of these buttons, I'll put the link to my online store as well. And if you guys have any questions, be sure to let me know. Just hit me up in the comment section. I would be happy to answer them. All right, so that was super cool. So it's always fun to make buttons. And uh, yeah, so there's gonna be a lot more buttons in my store. You guys can check those out at circworks.com. And I'm gonna take off. I'll see you guys later. That is all. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me here in the Art Lab. There's a lot of other great content on the channel. So click that subscribe button and you won't miss a thing. If you're an aspiring evil genius, visit circworks.com for all your mad science supply needs. And if you want to contact me, hit me up in the comments section or follow me on social media. I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you then.